Evening all, my analysis of the James Bond series continues with the second film, From Russia With Love, made in 1963. There are those who maintain that From Russia With Love is the best James Bond film of them all. The reasons usually cited are that it's true to Ian Fleming's novel, it's not overcome with the campness and outrageousness that subsequent Bond films have indulged in, Sean Connery is in top form, there are a pair of memorable villains, and it's got more of an intelligent story to it. All of this is basically correct, but From Russia With Love is not the best Bond movie of all time. Don't get me wrong, it's very good, in many ways it's a benchmark to aspire to, but there are things that take the edge off it truly being classified as the best. So only the best if you're the type of person who likes to react against general consensus, the Bond snobs if you will. As far as follow-up movies go, From Russia With Love is a vast improvement over Doctor No. Whilst retaining much of the lush colour from the previous movie, the action is vastly improved and now we're used to James Bond on the screen, we don't have to learn about him and can instead sit back and see him in action. There was an element of mystery about him in Doctor No, but here he's the solid one, cast adrift in a sea of mystery all around him. For much of the movie he has no idea of what Spectre's big plan is, he doesn't realise it's Spectre behind Tatiana's apparent defection and the theft of a lector decoding device. Early on, Bond has to be guided through the movie by Karen Bay, surely the best ally character in the Bond movies. The plot of From Russia With Love departs from most Bond movies and indeed a lot of other movies of this genre. Normally Bond pieces together the villain's plot bit by bit, inching towards the final reveal and confrontation. He often knows from very early on who he's going up against, and the bulk of the story is taken up with trying to get to the core of the villain's operation in order to stop it. But it's not until the fight on the Orient Express with Red Grant that Bond finally realises what's going on. And even then, Grant has to tell him. This renders Bond as a dupe for much of the movie, even going so far as to play Spectre's hands at every turn, up to being unwittingly filmed having sex. In later movies, we'll see Bond being physically and emotionally vulnerable, but here the viewers are getting something they're not used to seeing with Bond, being at such a disadvantage in terms of information. The super smart, fast thinking dispenser of so much trivia isn't on show here. It's something Daniel Craig will dabble with down the line, but you won't see this in a Moore or Brosnan or even Connery movie after this. This does come with some problems though, in an attempt to be a slick Cold War cat and mouse kind of movie, it sometimes gets lost in its own trickery. As I said, Bond has to be guided through the plot by both allies and foes alike. There are shady characters, such as the mysterious Russian agent sent to follow Bond, who contributes hardly anything to the plot, but who is tantalisingly shown to the audience as if he's going to do something important at some point. There's also a lack of a single villain to focus Bond's attention on in the mission. Instead, there's a quartet. Blofeld, still seen and unnamed at this point, Kleb, Grant and Kronstein. Kronstein, played brilliantly as always by Vladek Shebal, is given too little screen time and he's dispatched for effort rather than logic. Grant is an imposing figure of menace, but his presence isn't truly felt until the Orient Express scenes. Rosa Klebb is a great character, the benchmark for all Bond villainesses, but he's not even aware of her until the final scene, and they never get a satisfactory con confrontation either. She pulls a gun, he knocks it away. She tries to kick him with a poison tip shoe, and then Tatiana finishes her off. It needed something more of a build-up to that resolution. Speaking of Tatiana, this is another area where From Russia With Love doesn't quite hit the highs of the movies either side of it. Honey Rider is memorable, striking, statuesque, feral, vulnerable and groundbreaking in terms of how a mainstream movie of that time presented female characters. Moving ahead to Pussy Galore, she's probably the most famous Bond girl ever. Sexy, dangerous, smart, questionable and a match for Bond in many areas. Tatiana is beautiful. She's necessarily vulnerable to make her the damsel in distress, but at the end of the day, she's a dupe. Unlike Bond, she never gets the chance to piece it all together and to take charge. Her defection is unconvincing as well. She only went along with Kleb's plot because she genuinely believed Kleb was still with the KGB, 
and that she was still loyal to Russia. The plan to steal the lector, lure James Bond to Istanbul, and to bump the two of them off was Spectre's plans, not the Soviet Union's. But she defects purely on the basis of a quick affair with James Bond. This could have been handled better and more convincingly. When I hear critics and fans praising From Russia With Love as the best Bond movie, it's usually because they think the story and the plot is the strongest of them all, but I actually think the plot isn't as strong as people make it out to be. The MacGuffin of the Lecter Decoder is fine, and it will be used again in some variant in For Your Eyes Only and Goldeneye, but there's a lack of focus as to how it all pans out. What makes this movie work so well are the set pieces that keep the story in some sort of shape. The Bond pre-death uh, death pre-credit teaser, the briefing by Q about the special briefcase, the Spectre training camp, the periscope in the catacombs of Istanbul, the gypsy camp fight, the attack on the Russian embassy, the fight on the train, the helicopter chase and the final boat chase. Whenever the story starts getting a little meandering, we get a corker of an action scene. Now, I must make a special mention for the fight scene between Bond and Grant on the Orient Express. Simply put, this is one of the greatest fight scenes in film history. You have two brick outhouses of men in Connery and Robert Shaw, in a confined space, trying to kill each other with their bare hands, with no quarter given. It's messy and unruly, made all the more so by brilliant editing by Peter Hunt, who threw out all the conventional rules about cutting an action scene and chopped the film up as he thought best to give it a sense of brutality. You are watching the birth of cinematic ultraviolence here, which Bond movies would have a near monopoly over in mainstream movie until Lee Marvin's trail of destruction in Point Blank in 1967. From Russia With Love is a quantum leap forward from Dr. No, without a doubt. It's worked out what a Bond set piece should be, how a Bond movie should look and feel like. It's discovered the template for action scenes and it's purged the last vestiges of 1950s movie style that tinged Dr. No from the Bond system. But it is not the best Bond movie of all time. That honour goes to its successor. James Bond will return. <laughs>